Hey everyone. Today we have to have a conversation because I've been into this debate like the last 24 hours on Twitter with multiple people about something that I, I, I find to be quite fascinating. And it's led to this bigger conversation point that I think we need to clarify. I didn't realize this needed to be clarified. I thought this was fairly obvious because I've been in this video game stuff for 30 plus years and it's always been the same way. It got sparked because we're doing a giveaway, right? We're giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X, and you can enter to win one of these platforms down in the description or the pinned comment using our gleam.io link. A lot of times when I mention the giveaway though, I will use a certain phrase that seems to bother some people. That phrase being, hey, the winner gets to choose a current generation console of choice, Switch OLED, PlayStation 5, or Xbox Series X. And they get really bothered because I mentioned that this, this is a Switch OLED by the way, this is the OLED model, is a current generation device. They don't want to call it a current generation device, even though this is Nintendo's current generation device. It might not be Sony's current generation device, or Xbox's current generation device, but the Nintendo device never could be their current generation devices. Only Nintendo can have their own current generation device. And the arguments against it have always been something similar like, oh, well, you know, the Sega Dreamcast was the last device that Sega released. So by your definition, Sega Dreamcast is a current generation device. Except it's not because it's been discontinued. Sure, maybe they've released a classic version at some point. And yeah, I know the Sega Genesis, right, is back in production. The Mega Drive's back in production uh, for Brazil. Started production in 2016, but that still doesn't change the fact that it went out of production first. Bringing it back is just reprinting retro systems. That's not the same thing as releasing a brand new device. But this gets into a bigger debate because I'm not here to tell you if Switch is a ninth generation system or not, I don't even think that can be determined. Even Wikipedia seems confused because they list it as an eighth generation device. But then when you check ninth generation devices, it has a section about Nintendo Switch. And it mentions that it's not really sure if this should be called ninth generation or not. And there's a reason why they're not sure because it mentions, oh, te it's technologically considered part of the eighth generation. However, still might be a ninth generation device. And I can't tell you what generation this device belongs in because bottom line is, Generations are defined by time. Now look, I think we've all known for a long time that the word generation is a reference to a, a period of time. And that period of time changes depending on what you're talking about, right? Like, oh, are you a 90s kid? That's a generation of, of, of kid, a generation of a childhood. Doesn't mean you were born in the 90s. You could have been born in the late 80s, but maybe you're still a 90s kid because of when you were born. Are you a baby boomer? You were born during a certain generation, a certain period in time. Now that's always been a reference to, you know, literal age groups, but that's been the reference of all time. As an example, we talk about phones. I don't I don't have my phone with me. When we talk about phones, the iPhone 13 is currently Apple's current generation of device. It's probably only going to have have a, a one year generation, but still it is their current generation of devices. This right here is the focus right um, one by one. And this is actually their second generation focus right. Uh, they have a third generation version of this that I do not own. Um, my whole audio system actually runs through the third generation of the two by two, which is a two microphone version of this. And that would be their latest generation device. That is their current generation device by Focusrite for a two microphone setup. It's literally just based on what's the latest thing to come out and then a period of time. Now notice I said that is a current generation Focusrite device device, but I didn't necessarily say that it is the same as some other company's device that maybe is newer. Maybe someone came out with a brand new audio interface device like this this year. That doesn't make this last generation, by the way. Well, this one in particular is last generation, but the one I'm actually using down here doesn't make it last generation. It just means they haven't released a new device yet. See, when we look at console generations, and this has just been the general course of history dating back to the 70s, I think it was 1972 or something when the first generation began, it was always measured by when things came out, not how powerful those things are. And I think this is confusing people because some people think a measurement of a console generation is about how powerful something is. What if I were to tell you that all of these generations, handhelds are part of them as well? 
Game Boy is part of console generations. It's a handheld console. Is Game Boy as powerful as the Nintendo Entertainment System? As powerful as the Super Nintendo? Which generation does Game Boy even go in? It, would, it, it spanned three console generations and, you know, had you know, different iterations of Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Color. Oh my gosh, what generation does it belong in? I don't know. Because it's such a unique situation because it spans so many generations because of how long it was out. But handheld consoles have always actually been part of the generation. DS, as an example, is part of the seventh generation of consoles. 3DS is part of the eighth generation of consoles because consoles doesn't just mean home console. It also means handheld. Now, when you go on Wikipedia, it mostly will just reference home consoles. They kind of set it set handheld console generations as its own thing. And maybe that's a fairer way to do that, I suppose. Uh, but consider this when we look up, you know, definition of console generation, just a quick little Google search. The first thing that pops up is a Quora, which far from definitive, but uh, it says, how are video game generation consoles defined? Who defines them? All right, so Mike Prinky says, video game console generations are defined by the dominant game console in their marketplace. Anytime there's a significant shift in the marketplace leader to a new hardware model, that signals a console generation. As such, this can be extremely arbitrary. For a little while, processing word size was the best indicator of a generation shift. So this is where you start, oh, how big's the processing stuff? Power, right? With clear divides between the 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit eras, but that has become increasingly less relevant as time has gone on, and we've more or less hit the point of diminishing returns at 64-bit machines. What's more, a new hardware model has always reigned in a new console generation. In the interim, in 1976 and 1983, for instance, Atari released the Atari 5200, which was meant to replace the 2600, but the 5200 never caught on, while the 2600 continued to sell quite reliably. As such, the 5200 is considered a second generation console along with its predecessor. Interestingly, the second generation has quite a large field of what are now virtually unknown consoles as a consequence of how difficult it was to displace the 2600. The console generation are as follows and then obviously we get to present day which goes all the way up to the eighth generation this is basically first generation started with the magnavox odyssey second generation started with atari 2600 third with the nintendo entertainment system fourth with the uh, super nintendo and genesis fifth with the playstation 1 and 64 sega saturn sixth with the dreamcast playstation 2 gamecube and xbox seventh with the ps3 360 and wii eighth with the ps4 xbox one and wii u and then from there you know we, we obviously know about playstation 5 xbox series x and switch now again this isn't trying to argue the switch is a ninth generation system but at least based on this post back in 2017 well it said generations are marked by a movement to popularizing a new device how about wikipedia everyone loves wikipedia right wikipedia supposedly is this greatest amount of data in the world. It says in the video game industry, this is says home console video game generations. It's, it, they're just reading directly off of Wikipedia. It says in the video game industry, the market of home console video, video game console has, has frequently been segmented into generations, grouping consoles that are considered to have shared in a competitive market space. Since the first home console in 1972, there have been nine defined home console generations. A new console generation is typically has occurred approximately every five years in keeping with Moore's law, for technology, though more recent generations have had extended periods due to the use of console revisions rather than completely new designs. Not, not all home consoles are defined as part of these generations. Only those considered to be significant competitive consoles are classed into generations, and systems such as micro consoles are often omitted from these generations. That's where, that's where you get into like the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, the, 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 the Genesis Mini. Like those are just, those aren't really considered part of console generations. What do we learn here? What do we learn? Well, if we as a seventh generation device, because it marked a market shift towards Nintendo again, right? Like it took the market back from Sony and said, hey, we are now the market leader. And if the defining factor, the defining factor, according to Wikipedia, is that it's just about um, it's considered to have shared in a competitive market. So, so it's a grouping of consoles that are considered to have shared in a competitive market space. What determines what consoles are competing in a competitive market space? the time at which the consoles exist. If you look at all of these systems that are considered part of these generations, they all happen to have released, you know, within those generations, within that set period of time. So I don't even know how this became a debate in the first place. Since when 
has generations been anything other than a measure of time? During the seventh generation of systems, Nintendo decided to go in a vastly different direction compared to its competitors. It had been going with this power game this whole time. And remember, power, even according to Wikipedia, has never been actually what measures the console generations. What measured it is obviously a market shift uh, and obviously systems existing around the same time and competing in that same marketplace. Market shifts, again, are periods of time, uh, not necessarily power. So what happened is Nintendo went away from competing on the power end and decided we're going to try to instead make gaming more accessible and do it in a different way. So they released a system that technically was more powerful than the GameCube, not by much, but technically, uh, and then gave you a new way to experience video games, a way that wasn't previously happening in the video game industry. No, Nintendo's not the first motion control system, the first motion control platform to ever exist, but it popularized the idea of motion controls that are still around to this day, by the way, especially if you get into the VR space. So they gave us a new way to play that wasn't possible before and was obviously a seventh generation system. You could try to argue it's not if you want to use the power argument, but not even Wikipedia is using the power argument. And they even consider we as part of that generation. Moving beyond all that, obviously, because Nintendo realized, hey, look, we don't need to play the power game to be popular. They released the Wii U, which Wii U was sort of a weird, a weird time for Nintendo. They were trying to argue that it was this super powerful platform. And really, it was pretty much just on par with the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in terms of actual power. But it did offer that unique gameplay perspective of the gamepad, which might have been the initial ideolo ideology behind the, 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 the Switch, potentially more like a not realized version of what Switch eventually was. Uh, but again, um, that was considered Nintendo's eighth generation system. And even Wikipedia includes it as an eighth generation system. The first of the eighth generation, obviously followed up quickly by PlayStation 4 and Xbox One a year later. Uh, and then obviously at Switch, which by the way, is also more powerful than a Wii U and does give you a new way to play in that you could take home console games on the go and play them on your local home system and all of that stuff. So. The thing is, it also did a unique market play the same way we did. So what generation is a part of? Well, I don't know, because it was around for three years of the eighth generation that supposedly has ended and the ninth generation has begun. But if the ninth generation has begun and Switch is still a current generation platform for Nintendo and it ends up existing longer in the ninth generation than it did in the eighth generation, then wouldn't the Switch then become a night? generation system and this is what gets so confusing with switch is because we don't actually know how much longer it has to go if it's replaced next year switch was an eighth generation system but if it's not replaced till 2025 then switch actually spent more time competing with playstation 5 than it did with playstation 4 ergo timing wise it's ninth generation and this is why it's so confusing and why i don't think we should have a an exact placement of switch at this point but I, I find this all interesting because I know why people argue that power is the defining factor. They don't want to accept that there's a different way to handle generations. They don't want to accept that Nintendo's way of doing things is OK. Every person that I have debated with online over the last 24 hours that has attempted to argue that not only is Switch not a current generation platform, Wii isn't a seventh generation platform either, trying to argue it's actually a sixth generation and that Wii U is a seventh generation and just kind of push Nintendo back and back and back, basically, you know, saying Wii is just a modified GameCube. Put it this way. Every single one of those people have a hard time accepting that Nintendo's doing something different and doesn't care about getting all the multi-platform third-party games. Because that's what it comes down to. All the arguments stem from Switch can't be a current generation device. It's not getting ports of PlayStation 5 games. I mean, we're getting MLB The Show. We're getting NBA 2K every year. Uh, we're getting um, Gollum later this year. We're getting, you know, Skywalker, the Star Wars side. It doesn't matter, though, because you're getting cloud games. I mean, the cloud games exist on all the other platforms, too. They just have the ability to play them local as well. But that's besides the point. What I'm trying to say here is that they can't accept that Nintendo is doing something different because it's not doing it in the way they want them to. They want Switch to be a Steam Deck. They want they want Nintendo's platforms to be arguably fighting with the exact same technology as everybody else. And if it's not, 
it's last gen, which here's a particular funny point. The Switch is factually using technology from 2015, right? That is quite some time ago. I'm not going to debate that. But the PlayStation 4 was using technology from 2012 in 2013 when it came out. The Switch is using newer technology than the PlayStation 4. It's more advanced technology than the PlayStation 4. Now, the PlayStation 4 is more powerful because Switch is a handheld. Look at the size of a PS4 and compare it to a Switch. Even the slim. Like, it's night and day. Of course it's more powerful. It's just like comparing this laptop to my giant editing PC that I'm recording this on. Like, that editing PC is massive in comparison to my laptop. Of course it's going to be more powerful than this. Yeah, this laptop can't even, can't even compete in the same ballpark. But will we dare, will we dare argue that just because the device is less powerful using completely different technology that maybe is more modern, although in this case that technology in my desktop is more modern, um, would we be arguing that they don't belong together? I look, I don't know how this happened. I don't know what's happened with our minds that we have taken what's always been a measurement of time and turned it into some eping measurement of power just because Nintendo isn't doing what you want them to do. They've sold 100 million units now to of their last home console generations. Two, two out of three from Wii, Wii U and Switch. Two of them have crossed 100 million units. And if you want to throw the handheld systems in as well, well, that would mean three of Nintendo's last five systems they've released have sold over 100 million units. DS, 150 million. Switch, 100 plus, 103 plus. Well, we don't know where it's going yet. Wii, 101 million. And then you have the 3DS in there around 75. I, I, I'm i just at a loss for words. This is this feels like such a why do we have to have this conversation in 2022? Why can't we just accept that different companies do things in their own way? Not everyone needs to be competing for the top spot. I mean, if you want to get you want to get super technical. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are already last generation in comparison to gaming PCs. Already last generation. Well, you wouldn't dare call it last generation, would you? No, because gaming PCs are its own thing, exist in its own space. Yeah, and Switch is using mobile technology. Maybe it exists in its own space as well. Maybe. Fine. Remove Nintendo from console generations. See if anyone cares. Because all Nintendo has done for the last, I don't know, since 2006, so what does that make it, 16 years, is show that power isn't exactly the big selling point that everyone thinks it is. It is important and it can be a deciding factor for many, but creating fun, unique systems that nobody's done before and given to you in a convenient way has been Nintendo's MO for quite some time and it works. And maybe it's that it works that really bothers everybody. Maybe it's that Nintendo calls this a home console because you can dock it and use it with your TV. Maybe that's what bothers people. If they just call this a 3DS successor, would anyone be complaining? Would anyone say how weak this thing is when it, you know, came after the Nintendo 3DS, a 240p system? Would anyone complain? No, probably not. It's being complained about because it's being put in the same sentence as PlayStation and Xbox. Imagine a world where I'm doing a free giveaway willing to spend 500 plus dollars on a giveaway. And all it leads to is complaints and arguments because I mentioned that this is a current generation device. It's okay, buddy. I still believe. All right, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this down in the, uh, down in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next one.